Love Covenant Church, uh, all our viewers around the world, thank you for joining me once again for our midweek Bible study. Uh, these lessons are designed as a Bible study, and uh, we keep them short so that uh, people can maybe review the notes and go over them again. Also, it goes into the archives of uh, our platform for content and information. And so I'm starting a series now that we are entitling Cycles of Blessing. And in this series, there are a number of things we want to look at, interrogate, and probably predict and even prophesy right into your lives, into uh, your ministry, your business, the nation, and the nations. There are people that do watch us from around the world, uh, sometimes as the uh, program is being uh, flighted, but sometimes people go back into the archives and go there to where we uh, keep the messages and learn from that and use that. And so we're starting the first of uh, the series, Cycles of Blessing. The lesson today is entitled, Triggers of Blessing. Triggers of Blessing or triggers of blessing cycles. So our anchor scripture is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, and then 1 Corinthians 13, verse 9. King James Version. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. And in verse 31, he says, Covet earnestly the best gifts, but there is a more excellent way. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 9. Now we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. And so what is perfect is not just the Lord Jesus Christ here. Yeah, that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about. He's also talking about the more perfect way to do things is love. That's the second thing. The third thing, the more perfect way, is a way in which blessing is released. Blessing, all of those kinds of things are always on levels. So the fact that you're up this morning, the fact that you're breathing is a blessing. The fact that you have a meal is a blessing because there are some people that have neither. They don't have a place to stay. They don't have a meal. Uh, but then, depending on the quality of your meal, all of those things keep on adding to blessing. Some people came with public transport. Some people use public transport. It's blessing that is available. Then some have a vehicle. And then there are levels of vehicles. And so when we're dealing with when that which is perfect is come, every level reaches its stage of perfection before it goes to the next place. So at conception, for example, when a baby is conceived, that's a moment of perfection. When the sperm and the egg meet, that's a moment of conception, that's a perfect moment, but you don't have a baby yet. After the baby's born, you have a perfect baby. Uh, 10 fingers, 10 toes, uh, full working organs. So it's a, if it's a male, if it's a female, you have a perfect male, a perfect male. But even though they're perfect beings at that stage, they can't produce children because they haven't reached a stage of perfection in adult maturity. And so I think you get the point. So perfection is always something that is coming. So in this, this series of uh, triggering blessing cycles, there are things that we can do to get to a stage of perfection where blessing is inevitable, where you do certain things when it's like one plus one, the inevitable answer is two. One plus one is not three. And so there are things we'll show you that once you do them, blessing is inevitable. If blessing is not released, it's generally a sovereign uh, ruling from God that says you might not be ready or God allows uh, a moment of attack or temptation. All temptation is inevitable in every person's life. And uh, when Satan attacked Job, 
God gave permission, but gave parameters in which the devil could function and operate. You can do anything you want him, don't touch his life. And so God will always make sure that he assigns blessing, and when there is temptation or attacks that come, that those are assigned, managed, and controlled based on the individual. He will not put anything on you that you are not able to bear, including blessing. God will not give you a blessing that you are unable to bear because God would rather have you, in my own words, saved than blessed and destroyed. And so we look at when that which is perfect is come. So let's deal with uh, cycles of blessing. And so Daniel answers a question in Daniel chapter number 2 and verse 20. He's dealing here with what I call intellectual, systematic, mega, and meta-growth. Intellectual, systematic, mega, and meta-growth. And this works within the confines of a person's mind, their ability to think. Not the brain, the mind, the ability to think, the ability to think outside of regular uh, norms. And so they, there's a fundamental way to think. If you are doing, for example, uh, sciences to become a medical doctor, it is necessary for one to do biology, physics, chemistry, uh, in the sciences, and maybe maths. So uh, those are the norms to get a certain result. If you are going to be an English teacher or a lecturer in philosophy, then probably subjects like uh, English, history, maybe geography, economics, those kinds of subjects that are not sciences apply because of the kind of discipline you are entering into. If you are going to be a spiritual person, and I use the word if, there are certain things that you have to abstain from to attain in. So the Apostle Paul says, there are things that I have disciplined myself in so that I can attain a certain level of blessing. And so if you are going to be, for example, a medical doctor, 10 years must be given of your life if you are going to specialize. So you go through the normal four, five, six, seven years of medicine and then another three years to specialize and it's a continual learning process. And so when you're dealing with intellectual, systematic thinking in the mind, there are certain things that your mind has to get out and certain things that your mind has to attract. The capacity of your mind determines the level of which your blessing is released. So Daniel in 2.20, uh, Daniel is responding to the Lord revealing the king's dream and giving the answer to what the king had dreamt. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream of a massive image and God took away the dream, but it bothered him enough to know that he did have a dream and so he summons everybody in his kingdom, all the wise men, all the professors, every uh, traditional healer, sangoma, whatever you want to call them, were all summoned and said, if you can't tell me my dream and the interpretation, you're all going to die. Part of that team was Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And so that team got together in prayer, requested time uh, from Aspenaz, who was the, the chief of the slaves, the eunuchs, and uh, said, give us 24 hours. And they prayed. And then the Lord revealed to Daniel the dream and gave him the interpretation. So after the dream is revealed and the interpretation is given to Daniel, this is what Daniel says. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. So there are people that have might with no wisdom. There are people that have uh, wisdom with no might. There are people that don't have might, they don't have wisdom. 
but they are those that God gives wisdom and might, which God gave Daniel. So much so that Daniel served in an administrative role in government in uh, Babylon for four to five administrations for 75 years because God gave him both wisdom and might. And then Daniel says, and he changes the times and the seasons. So times and seasons, according to Genesis chapter number eight, the last three verses, God put times and seasons, uh, winter, summer, seed time and harvest, God put those in place and says, as long as the earth remains, these things will be in place. Daniel says God changes times and seasons. And so God then has the ability to enter into a person's life. If you are in a winter season in your life, if you are in a night time in your life, God is able to come into that and change it and turn a curse into a blessing, a challenge into a promotion. He changes times and he changes seasons. He removes kings. He sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise. Notice wisdom is given to the wise. He gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to them that know understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells within him. That's Daniel chapter number 2, 20, all the way to 22. And so when we're dealing with cycles of blessing, here yeah, God is telling Daniel to tell Nebuchadnezzar that he's introducing a cycle of blessing in Nebuchadnezzar's life. Understanding the backdrop of Babylon, Babylon the greatest kingdom that was formulated amongst the Gentiles at that time. In the vision, God told Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold that you see is a system. It is a system of government. It's God's golden order for government. The shoulders and the arms of silver is a system of government. It's a lesser system than gold. It's a system of government. He says the belly and the legs of brass is a system of government. The shins and the feet of iron is a system of government. The feet and the toes of mixed iron and clay is another system of government. And he defines literally 4,000 years of governmental systems that will enter into the world. And each of these systems come in different seasons. So when Babylon was at its peak, God changed the season and the Medes and the Persians came in. When they were at their peak, God changed the system and Alexander and the Greeks came into power in a Greek uh, explosion, not just in terms of military might, but in terms of thinking, thought, ideas, uh, and so on and so forth. And then the Greeks, after a short space of time, were overruled by the Roman Empire, which lasted for, for centuries, that's been replaced now by systems of government which we call democracy, the rule of the people, government for the people, by the people. All of these are systems that come in seasons that God changes. And with those systems comes levels of blessing. And these blessings are cyclic. And so there are individuals who may be unfortunate that are born between systems where a system that is being blessed and the blessing is waning, another one is rising but not fully blessed, in that overlapping of systems of blessing, a mindset is changing, a mind is developing, thoughts are being developed, ideas are being developed, and in that time, uh, generally, major wars are fought because one system is overruling another, and you can understand uh, that when that system is changing in the heavens, it plays on the, in the earth with major wars. And it's a war of, of thoughts, wars of spiritual authority that's played out in the physical realm. So anytime you see a war anywhere, even in your personal life, it means that a new system 
a new cycle is trying to intro be introduced into your life, enter into your life, so that your mind, your, your life, and the old system, the old wineskin, uh, the old garment is removed so the new one can manage the new blessing. So Jesus could not come in an Old Testament garment. He had to come in a New Testament because he is the ultimate blessing. And he says, I've come to fulfill the law and the prophets. I haven't come to do away with it, but I am a better system. I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And so when he came, he changed the way people think. And, of course, the Jews, the ruling parties of the day, didn't like the new idea, the new thought. Didn't like that because they were still benefiting from the blessing of that old system. And so it is important uh, we understand uh, that when a cycle of blessing is being introduced, a mind has to be shifted and changed. So let's go to Proverbs 6 and verse 6. Solomon is, is instructed or is instructing, go to the ant, you sluggard, and consider the ways, her ways, and be wise. And so he's saying here, they have no guide, they have no overseer, they have no ruler, and yet they prepare meat in summer. They gather their food in the time of harvest because the ant understands that a cycle of winter lack harvest is inevitable. It's coming. So the hardest time for their work is in the harvest season. And so uh, they have an instinct in them that triggers an action. They know uh, 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 the winter's coming. They know the harvest is going to be short. So instinctively, something is triggered in them to prepare for the years of lack. And so in this teaching here, Solomon is saying there are three levels of leadership here. Proverbs chapter number 6 and verse 7. He says the ants have no guide. That's the first level of leadership. Number two, they have no overseer. That's the second level of leadership. And number three, they have no ruler. That's the third level of leadership. So here are, are beings that are so minute and so small. They have no guide. They have no overseer. They have no ruler. Yet they understand cycles of blessing. They understand it very clearly. And so uh, the, the various species of ants around the world. Uh, when I was in Jamaica, as one of my practices is, uh, I watch ants all the time. And I was just waiting uh, in the foyer, waiting for our taxi to pick us up, and I started watching an ant. And the same thing I do here in Zimbabwe. Uh, when we were getting ready to leave Jamaica to go back to the States, I was sitting in the airport and I was looking at some ants in the corner, and I was wondering, where do you come from? Where are you going? How did you know there's food and left over here? Instinctively, the ants understand things that we as human beings should. With no guide, no overseer, no ruler, they are things you should be doing. You have to know that it's a harvest season. You have to know that a season of lack is coming. You have to know that we are prone to drought. And so uh, the southern hemisphere of Africa is experiencing horrendous drought. And so because we are prone to drought and because of predictions of so-called climate change and so on, there are things that should have been done or can be done to ensure that we have a harvest so that a country like ours, or Zambia, Malawi, Mozambique, etc., are not spending a lot of their revenue, internal revenue, on buying food. And so in the season, when there's drought, for example, massive dams should be constructed because when that drought enders, ends and the rains come, those dams are filled up. And so in another season of drought, there's no need to depend on the rains. We can depend on irrigation. And we can then 
irrigate and feed the entire world. And so we that have guides, that have overseers, that have rulers, we don't do things because we don't function instinctively. So cycles then, cycles then recur. Harvest is inevitable. Drought is inevitable. Winter is inevitable. Those things are inevitable. They're coming. So you then prepare for those kinds of things. And so let's look at uh, how to manage high seasons. High seasons. And so in high seasons, there's a subtitle here I want to use, which I call normal cycles. So normal cycles are seen within a, a, the spectrum of the universe. The universe. And so the Earth is at a total of 23 point something degrees, which means that as this Earth spins around the sun in 365 and a quarter days, spins around the sun, uh, in one hemisphere it's summer, in another it's winter. Generally around the equator, equatorial, uh, equatorial conditions are generally the same around the world. Heat, lots of rain, etc., etc. But in extreme hemispheres, south and north, it's characterized by, uh, in the north, for example, snowstorms, lots of cold, snow, ice, etc. In our area, we depend on summer rain. Uh, Zimbabwe, in our part of the world, doesn't have the kind of rain systems as the United States, which are band waves of rain that come off the Pacific and off uh, the North Pole that sweep over that uh, entire North American hemisphere. Zimbabwe in our area depends on what is called the intertropical convergence zone, where air from the southern part of Africa picked up off the Indian Ocean converges with air that's pushing down from the equator. Where those two masses of air meet, it's an intertropical convergence zone. And when those converge, it causes cumulonimbus clouds to form, and these clouds then unburden themselves there. This happens only certain times of the year. And so if the weather conditions above the equator in Africa, for example, over the Sahara, are not conducive, that hot wind doesn't blow far down enough to meet the cold wind coming up high enough and the convergence zone will generally take place just above the equator, which would be Kenya, uh, Uganda, coming down to DRC, and would hardly touch uh, Zambia coming to Zimbabwe. But if that hot wind is allowed to come further south, the convergence zone can take place over, for example, the Limpopo River, and so generally Zimbabwe, southern Africa, up is guaranteed a good rainfall area. And so when you have factors of an ocean warming called El Nino over the Pacific or over parts of the Indian Ocean, those convergence zones change the cycles and they become unpredictable. But because of unpredictable cycles, we that have guides, that have overseers, that have rulers, we can predict our own harvest in everything we do. And so universal cycles, they are political cycles, uh, there are 21 countries that are going to elections in this uh, 2024. Uh, these come every four years, some countries five years. Uh, in Russia, it's six years. These are political cycles. They are economic cycles. So officially now, some countries have announced in their country that their country is officially in a recession. And I can remember recessions uh, throughout my years, 67 years old, but I remember the worst recession in my lifetime was 1979, 80, 81. It was very difficult because at that time there were fuel queues in Zimbabwe. Money was bad just coming to independence. It was horrible for a new incoming Zimbabwean government read by, at that time, Prime Minister Robert Mugabe. It was very difficult teaching. I was just getting married. Many people were saying, this is not the place for us to live, we want to leave. But again, uh, an economic change came shortly after 1985, rains came back, things were back to normal. There was a huge economic boom. 
And then there are social cycles. These are based on age groups, how different age groups come out of uh, single digit years, which is zero to nine to 10. Then 11 teenage years, that's a different cycle. And then they become university kids and they marry young parents, small families. Then they become parents of young adults and the cycles keep on going. And we that were young with small children and our grandparents, these are social cycles. And with that come trends, trends. And so I was looking at a young lady at church the other day. She was wearing jeans that had holes all year by the knees. And I remember when I was uh, 19, my jeans got a hole in here. And uh, I had to throw them away because my friends were laughing at me. Can you imagine if I'd kept those jeans? I would have, had, I would have been so hype and so like, dapper because we forget cycles reoccur and so i've got clothes in my wardrobe that i've had since 1978 i wore something the other day that i had from 1980 and somebody said that i was really uh really a hip pastor because i was wearing modern fashion the fact is that it's an old suit it's just that the cycle has come back again and then there are also family cycles, family cycles. It's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And they repeat themselves in that kind of way. They repeat themselves. It's King Saul, King David, King Solomon. They repeat themselves. They keep on repeating themselves. So when Rehoboam becomes king and Jeroboam becomes king, they become a Saul. And then you get a Hezekiah coming, etc. So the cycles keep on repeating themselves. It's John the Baptist, it's Jesus, it's the apostles. It's cycles that completely keep on recurring. And then lastly, they are spiritual cycles, which is where we'll end this lesson and begin the next. But spiritual cycles then come with it in that cloud of spiritual cycles. All of the above that I mentioned, universal, political, economic, social, and family, that spiritual cloud covers all of them. You can have a universal, political, economic, social, and family cycles moving individually in their own column, in their own lane, and it doesn't affect the spiritual temperature within a nation. But when a spiritual cycle comes, it's going to affect every single lane inevitably, and there's going to be an outpouring of significant blessing. And so the scripture... It's very clear, it gives us a hint in Genesis chapter number one and verse five. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And then he ends it by saying the evening and the morning were the first day. And so in that scripture, you can see specific cycles. God brings light and darkness he calls one day, he calls one night. And then he sticks in there, besides day and night, darkness and light, he calls one the evening and the other one the morning. These are overlapping areas. And so when you come into evening or when you come into a morning, you must understand that a new cycle is being introduced. And if you can't manage and understand cycles in your mind, You'll never be able to manage the meta and mega blessings that God wants to release in your life. All blessing comes from God. All good and perfect things come from God. Anytime evil or negative stuff is unleashed in your life, is God pruning the tree, God uh, managing your life, God getting you back on track because human beings are meant to prosper. Human beings can't handle prosperity. Because human beings, as soon as they prosper, forget God, forget church, forget prayer. They don't do the things they did to get them to prosperity. And so suddenly, stop attending church, stop praying, stop sacrificing, stop fasting, become fat in their own head, in their mind, and forget God. And so many times in Deuteronomy, Moses told the Jews, when you get to the promised land and you are blessed, don't forget God. Don't forget God. Sisters and brothers, cycles of blessing are inevitable in your life. They're coming. When you get blessed, do not forget God. 
Thank you for being with us for this lesson today. May God bless you as you begin to realize your new cycle of blessing. I'm Bishop Judah Bismarck of New Life Covenant Church. We love you guys. We'll see you next week.